Welcome back to the page. Today I'm going to talk to you about my hybrid endobrow approach. And what do I mean by that? Well, everyone is so afraid of the word brow lift because the truth is brow lifting is really kind of a passe or old idea, an old concept. Brows don't age up and down like this. And so patients don't ever need to look excited or scared or weird after a surgery like this. And we're not actually lifting the brow directly up. Usually what I'm doing in my procedure is dealing with what happened through natural aging and through natural gravity. So what naturally happens is the brow loses volume and it drops and you get this hooding over the lateral corner or lateral edge of the brow. So I'm trying to take that lateral brow and bring the lateral edge of the brow up. What does that do? How does that improve the way your eye looks? Well, it takes the heaviness off the corner of the eye. It deals with excess skin that we sometimes remove in conjunction with a blepharoplasty or an eyelid lift. So it brings that brow skin up and brings the eyelid skin with it. It takes the tension off the brow. So if you right now, sitting at home, take your finger, put it above your brow and lift up, your eye all of a sudden starts to feel better. Why? Because it takes that heaviness off of the corner of the brow. It makes you look more attractive and more awake. It doesn't make you look scared, excited, nervous, or weird. This is so different than the traditional approaches to brow lifting. Again, where they would make big incisions across the entire hairline or five separate incisions here in order to lift things in different vectors and poles. In a hybrid endobrow approach, I make one incision on each side. It's right here behind the hairline. It's very well hidden. It's shaped like a semicircle. Now, why do I use one incision and, and why is this important? Well, I use one incision because through that incision, I can access the entire brow all the way down to the mid or lower orbit and the temple. I can release all the, all the arcade of attachments that are here. I can change the shape of the brow. And from this incision, I can actually make three small holes in the bone that I use to, to su support the sutures that I use to recapture the brow. Those three sutures allow me to use a trajectory or to ba basically um, uh, to basically use each suture to attach to one different part of the brow in order to triangulate the position of the corner of the brow. This is key because like I said, we're not just trying to lift the brow, we're trying to change the shape. It's brow fashioning. It's something that's different. So from this small hidden incision, I can access the brow, reposition the entire temple, upper brow area, and the lateral brow position. I can change the direction and the orientation, giving you a more attractive looking upper face. I don't have to do multiple incisions throughout the hairline because we only need that one incision to do what we need. Once this is done, it's very stealthy. It's very hidden and hard to see afterwards. And that really gives a long-term lasting result. Now, there are other approaches where they use where they call an endobrow approach, where they use a camera on the inside to visualize what's there. I call it a hybrid endobrow because I use this incision and part of it I do open and part of it I use a camera. The camera helps me fully visualize the release of the fascia here above the bone. And that also allows me to visualize the nerve and the, and the blood vessel that are here and here. So I can make sure that I maintain those and don't disrupt those. A hybrid endobrow technique really is the state of the art. Least amount of incisions, least amount of downtime and best overall result in my opinion. So this is what I do in my practice and how it's a little bit different. The last thing I would say is after we do the brow lift on both sides, after we do the brow fashioning to change the corner of the brow, we take the tension off, everything has been rebalanced. Uh, things just lay more naturally. On the table, what you'll see is, and I'll show some videos of this, normally when someone's laying down flat, you can move the skin a lot. And that tells you that when they sit upright, the gravity's gonna affect things and bring the brow down. After the procedure's been performed, the brow is tight, the entire forehead is tight, and you really can't move that skin much. That shows you that there's been a successful approach to the lateral brow lifting. Once that's complete, we use fat, nano fat and structural fat, and we actually inject that fat just above the bone underneath the brow to give a little bit of fullness back to the areas where patients have lost volume in these regions. Sometimes they need additional fat in the upper eyelid as well, or in the upper brow or the forehead. These are all areas where a little bit of fat goes a long ways to supporting the lift that we've done. This is my approach, a hybrid endobrow technique, and I think it is the state of the art and the best approach to give you a natural looking result. We're not trying to pull things and make them look over-exaggerated. We're not trying to shoot past our goal. We're not trying to overcompensate. We're really trying to just release the tension, put things back where they belong, and put them in place so that they maintain their position over time. That's the hybrid endobrow approach. If you'd like to learn more about how to use this in conjunction with facelift, lower and upper facelift, there's more information on the site. One last concept, how do you know when you need a brow lift? And I think this is really important because everyone wants to know, am I ready for this or not? 
You don't want to look like a jar with the wrong top. So you definitely want to address the upper face if you're working on the lower face as well. Now, if I take the cheek and I lift it up like this and I push straight up, you can see a little bit of wrinkling and heaviness here in the brow. If I need to do both hands to get the result that I want in order to see how things are going to change in this region, that generally tells me as a surgeon I need to address the brow. Alternatively, if at rest the patient has a wrinkle here and here, that's the muscle, the frontalis muscle working under strain to keep the brow up. That tells me that at baseline their brain is activating the brow to get the skin to come off of the lid in order to open the eye. And they probably need a brow lift. Patients that come to me and tell me, my eyes are heavy, I need an eyelid surgery. I'm always careful, I use caution, because 90% of patients want an eyelid surgery only and need a brow lift. Only 10% don't, so, and most of them don't want a brow lift. So how do we talk to patients that are coming from eyelid surgery that also need a brow lift? Well, remember, there's a feedback mechanism inside your brain. There's a reflex arc. So if skin on the eyelid or heaviness on the eye starts to close the eye, your brain activates the brow to open the eye more. And that allows you to see in the wild, to avoid predators, to be better at catching your own prey, to be successful. If we remove the skin that's above the eyelid and that removes the impetus of your brain to activate the brow, your brow could drop more. So if at rest you've got a little wrinkle or a little bit of heaviness and then I take out the eyelid skin, your eyes could look worse after an eyelid surgery if you don't also get a brow lift. That's another way that I assess the need for a brow lift if I'm also doing an eyelid surgery. So, like I said, if you're getting a facelift, I assess the disjunction between the two. If it's a two-hand lift, it needs a brow. If there's an issue and we're doing eyelid surgery or if there's a wrinkle up here at rest, that's another indicator that there's a need for a brow. At the end of the day, you want to move everything up and you don't want to just stop here. You want the entire face and upper face to move up as a concept around the skull back up to where things belong. Brow lift in conjunction with lower face and neck lift is the best way to achieve a harmonious result when you're talking about facial rejuvenation procedures. That's the endo brow lift. Sorry, a lot of information on what it is, how it works, and who needs it, but hopefully this has been a good deep dive explaining the concepts.